Okay, at the go to present. Top right. Sorry. That's all right. So basketball is a game that I grew up watching and playing, and I was always intrigued by players who played in decades before mine. As a kid, my dad would always tell me about the great players like Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. I wanted to know if they were really better than the players of my generation. This debate between father and son will never be settled due to the biased opinions that we both held. But there is one thing that we can agree upon. That is how much the game has changed from then till now. From the 80s physical game to the 90s individual excellence of Michael Jordan, and from the 2000s individual attitude and culture shock, and till now the game, rules and regulations, they all attribute to how the game has changed. Today I will highlight for you how the NBA has changed from the 80s till now. Starting off with the rough play in the 80s. Basketball during this era was when the game was very physical. The Detroit Piston Bad Boys were the most notable for their very physical style of play. They are known for doing things out of the ordinary, such as shoving players out of bounds, such as starting fights with other teams, and they took pride in it. But this team, set the tone for what the whole league was actually like. Every team in the NBA was very physical back then due to the lack of rules. The Celtics and the Lakers had animosity were one of the most notable. The era of, here's a quote from Kevin McHale, who was a Celtics legend during the time. The era of basketball from the late 80s to the 90s was the best defensive era in basketball. Look at how, much, how rough team play, teams played in the late 80s. Larry Bird throwing an elbow to Kareem Abdul Bar. Magic Johnson grabbing Isaiah Thomas, the whole swarm of Detroit defenders taking Michael Jordan, the 90s also with the emergence of the Knicks under the tutelage of Pat Riley, Miami was another one, Carl Malone causing Isaiah Thomas stitches to the, to the eyebrows, and all hell broke loose specifically with the hand checking being legal. These caused lots of riots through the 90s. Here's some images that show just how much they didn't care. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were the biggest stars during the 80s. Their rivalry caused them to become global icons for the sport and also brought a lot more interest to the sport. Now moving on to the 90s. Michael Jordan dominated the 90s. He won six out of six NBA Finals that he played in, and there was no other star even close to being compared to him during this time. Michael Jordan dominated this game in his score first mentality, and he was the first to really have a selfish mindset about the game, but it worked for him. Along with that, Michael brought basketball to an even bigger brand than it was before, while building up his own individual brand. He took the sports to higher heights after Magic and Larry retired, and this was pretty unimaginable. Now the 2000s. In this era, a lot of less unnecessary roughness was due to league recognition of the unnecessary contact. David Stern made actions, who was the commissioner, made actions such as finding and suspensions more prevalent. This era had a lot of selfish play and players with big egos. Players such as Kobe Bryant, Allen Iverson, Vince Carter, and Shaquille O'Neal all presented very egotistical styles of play. The player in this era, players in this era are going to play with a lot of intensity and a lot of style. Many players wanted to be in the limelight. An example of this was the Kobe and Shaq feud. These two players fought over who was the alpha male of the team. And although they had very great success over their three championship years, they had a lot of inner locker room conflict. This feud highlighted the rising need for NBA stars to feel like a Hollywood star. These two cared a lot about star power, and their egos caused for the clash. A quote from teammate Horace Grant perfectly describes this. 
When you have two dominant athletes who want to be the best and they're so competitive, you're going to have friction. In every walk of life, you're going to have some egos. That's no different with Kobe and Shaq. I think it's about who gets the line. In the, in the 2000s, there are also other players that added to the culture, including Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson came into the league being unapologetically himself and refused to conform to the norm. He wore do-rag, saggy pants, and gold chains, which led to media uproar. He inspired players after him to express themselves in the way they wanted to. He is very notorious for calling out a reporter who questioned him about practice, saying, are you talking about practice? A huge moment for the sport was also when Yao Ming came into the league. He brought himself along with thousands of millions of millions of Chinese supporters. Yao Ming was able to bridge the gap between China and the NBA. Now NBA stars often go to China to promote their own brands while giving back to their community for their support. There's Shaq and Yao Ming right there. Today's game. The NBA today has teams shooting more three-pointers than ever before. In 2004, the most three-point shooting team in the NBA, Seattle Supersonics, shot 23.6 three-point shots a game. Last year, the most three-point shooting team, Golden State, shot 31.8. If that 2004 Seattle team played in the league today, they would be 18 out of 30 of three-pointers attempted. Hand-checking rules and defensive regulations make this easier for the offenses. Many players try to take advantage of this by flopping. Flopping, which is over-exaggerating unnecessary contact. Many NBA teams also are adapting to a, more of, of, of a running gun style of play that calls for ball movement instead of stagnant offense. This type of offense lets players freely move around, which leads to people getting more open three-point shots. Every era had its perks and the game is constantly being reformed by the rules and regulations. The grittiness of the 80s, the ego era of the 90s, and the rules and regulations all play a part in the changing NBA. The game will always change and people will always debate about which era is better, just like my father and I. You can debate which is better, but whether we like it or not, the only thing that is certain is that the culture and style of the game is always changing. Thank you. Winston's not here. So, so let's go on next. So I guess that just means it's going to roll to me uh, pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I like the story you have at the beginning about you and your dad arguing about the, the eras and who's the best player and that sort of thing. I think that that sets this up as a more interesting presentation than just if, as if it's a dispassionate discussion of the issue. I think you've got a very clear statement of what your goal for the speech is. Uh, so there's a, a clear purpose statement. Um, the preview is okay. It's I can tell that information is going to be chronological. I can't quite distinguish the periods of time as clearly at the beginning of the speech as I could during the presentation, but I knew where you were headed and I thought uh, that you laid it out reasonably well. Um, some of the material is uh, cited pretty effectively, like you have the quotes right up there on the slides, so that makes it hard to say that they aren't included in the presentation. Uh, they're right there for us to see. Sometimes I think there's some other information that doesn't get uh, uh, included as much. For example, you've got you've got the picture of um, uh, Magic and Bird, and you maybe say two words about that. I don't. I'm a slight exaggeration. Two sentences about it, and, and not much else about it. And it just felt like, okay, well, I know that I know what's going on there, but I. 
you know, like you said, it's the different eras and different kinds of things. You mentioned a little bit about those kinds of things. You talk about the style of play, and I like the idea that you're talking about the style of play, the things that were being emphasized. I never heard an explanation about what the rule changes were over a period of time, and that's one of those things that is kind of connected to the style of play. I mean, a, a very vague reference to David Stern calling out uh, uh, fines and that sort of thing, but uh, how it was operationalized in the uh, rules, I don't know. I did think, for example, on the information at the end, when you're talking about the, um, the importance of the three-point shot and that sort of thing, and contrasting the, the way that they've gone differently, they, that that would have been a perfect place for a, a statistical graphic as opposed to just the script on the um, slides. That was the main problem that I had with most of the slides. You had a few pictures in there too which helped but a lot of the slides are just it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing I was talking about with Elisa. You've got a, you've got basically the content of your speech listed there for us to read along with. It's not quite karaoke public speaking, but you do have a lot of the same things that you're talking about instead of giving us the visual referent for it. I think for example on, when you mentioned uh, you know, Seattle in 2004, you know, they led the league in three-point shots and here's what their average was. And in uh, 2016, they'd have been number 14 on the list of teams. That would be an easy visual graphic to make. It would be a lot more interesting than just writing it out up there on the screen. And I think that that's a, a, an opportunity that gets missed. I think that you do a little more reading than you want, but not as much as other people have been doing. And the best part, though, is that when you are doing the reading, you're reading it as if you give a damn about the speech. Like, you know what you're talking about, you're interested in what you're talking about, and even though you're looking at the notes, you talk like you, are, you care about what you're talking about, and that's something that I think really adds to the presentation. All right, thank you.